Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Gonzalez, and I did my thesis over the lives of criminals and the house of victims. Um, I narrowed that down to narcissism and domestic abuse. Now, not everyone is going to understand how narcissism is a crime, because it's more a personality trait. Um, but uh, the things that a lot of narcissists are capable of doing eventually do become crimes. Um, I ended up choosing this specific uh, road uh, to narrow down my topic to uh, because it kind of hit close to home. Um, been through a few things in my life, and I felt like I could, I could really get passionate about narcissism and domestic abuse and how to better, not just educate myself, but um, maybe open a few other eyes within this class. So I chose the BPSS approach, uh, which is an integrative approach. It stands for the Bio, Psycho, Social, and Spiritual uh, Theory. Um, so it's encompassing so many more theories than just like a, a moral approach, um, a medical approach, a psychological. Those are all great. Um, there's nothing wrong with those by any means at all but they're very singular in nature, just one discipline, one way to look at it, um, one way to go about trying to figure out who somebody is. Uh, and that's great, but you know, not everybody fits into that kind of mold. So uh, taking an integrative um, approach to a criminal and a victim, I really feel like is the best way to go about things. Um, we're not easy people to understand. We're not easy to know. Um, I feel like I'm a walking conundrum 95% of the time that I'm just living and breathing. And I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of people out there are also the same way. So I don't feel it's fair to um, look at anyone from just a one-dimensional perspective. I feel like to truly understand anybody you really need the full scope of who they are and in order to get the full scope of somebody you have to go more than just um psychologically how are they well that's great you're you're thinking up here and that's wonderful and all but um you're missing a lot of other details as well so i really felt like the bpss approach was going to be like my best bet um to explaining why it is so difficult to understand some people. Um, so, if you'll bear with me for just a moment, let me get my bearings really quick. Okay, so going back to my initial very wide scope title of the whys of criminals and the hows of victims, um, that's kind of saying like, why can criminals do what they do and how as a victim um, is that person able to move forward? What on earth goes on in that person's head that allows them to either um, move forward in a positive direction, they either stay stuck in that victim mentality, or in some really bad cases, you know, they end up dying. It just depends on what they choose to be. And on the criminal perspective, the why, you know, why are they able to just be these awful people like what in their makeup from head to toe makes it okay in their brain to be like yeah I can go out and um, abuse somebody I can go out and kill somebody um doesn't matter what kind of crime it is it's uh mind-boggling to try and understand why it's okay in their mind um to be that kind of person so that's the that's a full scope of this title. And again, with the BPSS approach, it is very versatile um, to try and figure out the criminal, try and figure out the narcissist, try and figure out the psychopath, the sociopath, the mass murderer, whatever. You can encompass all of these different people, um, use this approach, and really start to figure out, okay, this is their makeup. In every sense of the word, this is who they are. Um, same for the victim. Um, you can do the same approach. Uh, you can take many different victims from many different crimes who have had 
different backgrounds, different uh, future projections of who they thought they were going to be, who they ended up becoming. It doesn't matter. This approach is very, um, it's easily mirrored on both sides, even though the people inside these mirrors are completely different. Um, so I felt it was really, really, uh, um, oh, the word. <laughs> I felt it was really useful uh, to take this approach here. Excuse me. So speaking on domestic abuse, it is um, prevalent everywhere. It's kind of silent. Not everybody knows about it. Not everybody knows, you know, um, who those victims are unless they tell you. Uh, and a lot of times they're not going to tell you because there's so much shame and um, uh, just negative uh, feelings that encompass saying, hey, I am either a survivor of domestic abuse or I'm currently in a um, abusive relationship. It's not fun to go around saying those things by any means. And it's really hard as someone on the outside to hear that, like, oh gosh, you, what, what do I do for you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I would say be as supportive as possible. But, you know, it's really hard unless you're in that situation to really understand what that person's going through. Um, and that I chose narcissism um, as the criminal side of things because, uh, like I said before, narcissism isn't a crime, it's a trait, but when you start enacting control and um, manipulative tactics and just <sighs> psychological entrapment over people, um, you start making the victim feel, you know, like there really is no way out. And when you start making fe making someone feel trapped, then they start believing they're trapped. And when they start believing they're trapped, they start actually walking out in that life. Like, oh my goodness, I really am trapped and there's nothing I can do about this. Um, so uh, it's just, it was a little difficult for a lot of people to get through. and. To change the narcissist, um, I really feel like there has to be some very traumatic experience in this person's life um, that's more than just like a car crash, like, oh, I could have lost my life. I don't feel like that's traumatic enough, to be very honest. Um, it has to be something very personal to this person, um, and in order to get to that personal side of the narcissist, you have to wade through a lot of layers. Um, if you don't pull back those layers, a lot of times you're really not going to get to the core of that person. Um, and in order to understand all of those layers, you have to know biologically, what are they dealing with? Um, you know, are they predisposed to any addictions, any mental disorders, um, uh, any personality traits besides narcissism? Like, is there something in their DNA that they literally cannot escape because it has been passed down. Um, psychologically speaking, like what is what do they think on a daily basis? What were they raised with um, that they think is okay? What were they exposed to as a child um, that they felt was completely normal? Uh, there's not a problem with you know thinking a certain way, feeling a certain uh, way, or um, uh, behaving in a certain manner, like. All of these two normal people outside of the scope are like, oh my goodness, you don't do those things. But to this person, it's completely normal. So you have to know those two issues right off the bat, biologically and psychologically, what, what's holding them, you know? And socially, how do they interact with people? That all goes back to these two, biological and psychological. How are they interacting with people in a, in a social perspective? What do they do in their daily lives that, um, you know, sets them apart? Do they go to work on time? Do they keep up the facade that they have everything together? Or do they actually not wear a mask out in public and they're a literal walking train wreck? And people are like, oh my goodness, <laughs> this guy needs some help. But, you know, his, his spouse, his girlfriend, his flavor of the month, whatever she may be, is just completely in love with him. How? What kind of mind games is he playing over her? Socially speaking, what does he do to her that no one else is falling for, you know? Um, and then spiritually, 
what do they believe? Do they believe in anything at all? Is there a higher being for that person? Do they really feel like they are in absolute control of their entire life and nobody around them can tell them, you know, any different? Um, it's so touchy because it's different for everyone. All of those aspects are completely different for anybody that you want to look at and try and figure out. No one's going to fall into the same category. The, the serial killer is going to be different than the mass murderer, and the mass murderer is going to be different than the drug kingpin, and the drug kingpin doesn't look anything like the narcissist, yet they are all um, not great people. They're pretty bad, uh, and the things that they're capable of are just astounding, to be very honest. Um, so if you take, the, take all of those encompassing things about the criminal and move that over to the victim. Biologically speaking, what is that victim suffering from inside that they can't get away from? Is there a history in that person's life of domestic abuse? Like, did the victim see the mother being abused or seeing the father being abusive to the mother or whatever that may look like? Is that normal for that victim? So does that victim really feel like, you know, well, this is just how life is? Um, and I'm not saying that's a biological trait by any means, but when you grow up with something uh, and it becomes normal to you, it just becomes normal in your adulthood. You mimic your childhood in your adulthood. That is fact. Um, so does she come from the line of abuse? You know, does she come from the line of any kind of alcohol addiction or drug addiction or um, anything that makes her really susceptible to somebody's uh, ma manipulation tactics. Um, psychologically speaking, you know, how does she handle seeing abuse or living in abuse or being abused? Is that normal for her? Uh, does she come from a healthy family, actually, and just get stuck in this rut and not realize, you know, that she's there until years later, months later, whatever the timeline may be? Um, how is she handling that? Like, is this normal for her? Does she know what she's actually in? Um, socially, is she, like, held on a leash? Um, not a physical leash, but, you know, you can't talk to this person. You can't go to this place. You can't interact with these people. Like, what is socially, how is she in this relationship versus when she was not in this relationship? How different uh, did that person look like? Um, and spiritually, is she praying every day? You know, does she believe in something? Does she really feel like she's out here all by herself? Um, has someone made her feel like there's no one else to help her? Uh, does, it, does that come from his beliefs? Does she really believe, you know, what he's saying? There's so much. There's so many questions that can be answered uh, with the BPSS approach. Um, and I keep saying it's not just for narcissism and domestic abuse. So many questions can be answered about everyone using this approach. Um, I really feel like it's valuable to uh, just the study of anybody, but since I take a fascination with the darker side of life, I really feel like this approach and uh, being an interdisciplinarian and finding an integrative approach uh, to studying people, I really feel like it is uh, invaluable in this field of criminals, of victims, of abusers, of addicts, of um, psychologically depressed people, mental illness, whatever it may be that people don't know how to understand and don't know how to grasp. I truly feel like when you take an integrative uh, approach to trying to figure out a problem that you, is just so massive you can't wrap your head around. I really feel like that is where you start finding um, ideas. That's where you start finding your, uh, your answers to the questions that no one's been able to answer before. I truly feel like integratively, it's, it's positive. It is, um, it's a step in the right direction and I greatly, greatly, greatly feel like, uh, as an interdisciplinarian, I will be able to offer so much to the field of studying people and figuring out um, who they are and why they do what they do.